Hi friends, very good afternoon. Yes ma, welcome back to Let's Start UPSC CSA English with India's largest learning platform and academy. Let's crack it. Please drop a confirmation message. Is everything is good to go? Am I visible, clear, audible? Hope things are good. Yes ma. So what all you will get under an academy platform? Needless to say, daily live classes. Isn't it? Yes, every day sharp 2 p.m. on time live platform. Yes, in YouTube platform live class. Isn't it? What is the best part of it, ma? You can chat with your educator, engage in discussion, ask your doubts and answer polls. All while the class is going on. Isn't it? Apart from this, live test and quizzes. Live quiz. Yes, very recently in the last one week I have begun with the concept of uh, not one week. It's been more than 10 days. Isn't it? Everyday quiz. The quiz is doing an awesome. It's so very, very important. Why? Because I could guarantee say that it will be our ultimate revision for prelims. Prelims are uh, 2021 prelims. Of course, it's fast approaching. You have to get ready on a daily basis. So, don't ever miss this quiz opportunity. Come and attend as a live learners. What is the best is? Next is structured courses. All our courses are so structured in line with your exam syllabus in order to help you best prepare for it. Isn't it? So, in one word, I could confidently say it is OSS for your PMI. One stop solution for your prelim mains and interview. Unlimited access to unlimited courses. One subscription gets you access to all our live and recorded courses to watch from the comfort of any of your devices for which you have to download an academy learning app. Yes, my dear. This is me, your dear ma'am. I'm Dharlakshmi, senior, top and a very passionate educator. Yes, friends, my passion for teaching in a, in search of a, in search of pursuit of happiness, one of my greatest happiness lies in being as an educator for UPSC CSE category. You can ask me, ma'am, why? Yes, my dear friends, this is the only field I have more than 15 years rich experience. My expertise, my experience in this field. Of course, with respect to my teaching experience, I have more than decade long rich experience in teaching for UPSC and CSC category. I take classes across India, pan India. Fine. My credentials specific to civil service. Yes, ma'am. I have appeared twice in UPSC CSC interview with six consecutive mains. Six times I have cleared prelims just like that in a series. I have a very rich experience of six mains. And a special note is that all those six mains with geography as an optional. Yes, second interview, 2017 interview that was most memorable. Why? Because I have secured I was all India topper in that interview. Despite becoming a topper, I couldn't come in the merit list just because I have missed it in a very narrow margin. A sad thing is that my attempts got exhausted. But nobody can deny or I can't, nah, no storm can uproot the knowledge and uh, experience and expertise I have on this field. Yes. Apart from this, I have my other profile as well. I have cleared my state service. I have cleared uh, more than seven to eight other competitive exams. You can simply, uh, I can uh, hear your mind voice, ma'am. Deal ma'am, is your only job is to sit and prepare for competitive exams? Certainly not. I have prepared for only one exam, UPSC, CSE, which has made me to clear all other exams which I have just applied and appeared for it. So I can confidently, you can take me as a glaring example. Our exam is like a mother of all exams. So will the mother will leave the kid? Definitely not. Such like this preparation, a preparation for this exam will help, uh, will help you in clearing all other exams. Okay. Fine. Mentoring. This is a very, very special. I have mentored more than 25,000 aspirants over a period of last uh, 12 years. I haven't stopped just by mentoring. I have hence proved. Yes, I have proved myself by producing the toppers and rankers. And many of my students are effectively and efficiently working as an IAS and IPS officers across India. So, you can reach your DL ma'am using this code DL10. Yes, my dear friends, you can, I have also shared my telegram link, join my telegram link so that you get the class details. I'll use to share the code and link of the live quiz. I'm very, very active in my telegram channel. Okay, so please uh, stay connected through my telegram channel, of course. For uh, subscription details, you can take my number from my telegram and they can, and you can reach me out. And don't forget to follow me in an academy profile. Of course, my profile name is Dhanlakshmi. Fine. Prepare with the top educators. Indeed is a blessing, isn't it? All the best brains are found under one roof and needless to say, that roof is an academy. To name a few, Mrina, Sir, Roman Saini, Ayush Shangi, Sudarshan Gurjar, the list is endless. Definitely, it's a huge list. So, utilize the platform to its fullest. 
comprehensive syllabus yes my dear friends here again we give you uh, of course closer to 16000 courses for upsc csc category so students can never ever come with any complaint saying that ma'am there is a deficit of courses for these subjects these phases and this optional no we provide everything in excess so it is up to you cherry pick the courses in which you are looking for and of course utilize the platform to its fullest Fine ma. One subscription unlimited benefits, isn't it? Yes. Learn life from the comfort of your own. Unlimited access to all courses. Top educators. So your UPSC uh, CSE preparation is going to be with the top educators of India or found under one roof. Exhaustive coverage of the syllabus. Regular doubt clearing sessions. Live to series study material. Answer writing sessions and mentoring and guidance. Even yesterday night I have done one AMI session of course it was one of the most powerful sessions so do come and attend the AMI session ma apart from a regular classes on and off at least fortnightly once we should have an AMI session which is purely in the terms of mentoring and guidance isn't it answer writing in every class of mine in every class of mine I'll use to emphasis on answer writing very specifically in special platform and plus platform fine so you can uh, i did not know what is stopping you from taking the subscription so stop thinking and stop enrolling using your dlmam code dl10 yes preferably the strong recommendation is to go for 24 months for entire 24 months you have to pay only 64800 by using my code dl10 and for 36 months you have to pay only 81100 by using my code dl10 is this fine yes so upsc optional of course and plus iconic subscription yes ma here we give you for 24 months you have to pay only 96300 and of course for 36 months you have to pay only 126900 here again we provide you yes ma very good afternoon here again, we provide you an EMI option uh, and company has very recently come up with a novel option is that they are providing for a loan option as such because many students come with a complaint that they don't have a credit card. So, in all the possible ways, company is giving us best to help the students in order to reach their dream destination. Simultaneously, don't forget to use my code DL10. Is this fine? Very good afternoon to one and all, Ram Kumar and RJ. Yes, ma'am. So what is this mentoring? Of course, it's a brain to pick and here to listen and push into the right direction, isn't it? Mentors are all around us who makes you feel confident, inspired, focused and willing to share their experience, isn't it? Yes, so our journey, we know this is a difficult journey. It's a difficult terrain. It is not bed of fruits. Roses, of course, it is a thorn of bushes. Successful people never reach their goals alone. Irrespective of the starting point, start your journey happily from any part of India because it's an all India exam. You can start from anywhere. Nothing is going to stop you. Okay, so keep saying to yourself, well, I should, I will stop only at the doorsteps of Labas now. So your journey is going to be, you're going to board on a bus which is going to stop only at the destination without any stoppage or break in the middle is this fine yes my dear friends so apart from the regular teaching you are in dire need of a coaching guidance training motivation knowledge support system it's all about that it's nothing but a mentoring which you have which you will get in the iconic subscription yes thus i become a mentor because i wanted to give the thing i didn't realize is how much i would get so good enough better best I want all of you to come see as a as best. Yes, so try to come as a toppers and rankers. That is very, very important. Of course, in yesterday's class, we had a wonderful story, col colonialism and imperialism. We have discussed the, what is this, ma? First part, what is the difference? Colonialism versus imperialism. Hope you understood. Hope you enjoyed that part. Cutting of Chinese melon. Do you remember open door policy, me too policy? So that was the first part in yesterday's class we have dealt with. And today we are going to discuss the second part. Is this fine? Because it runs in two, three parts. It's a big topic. So we'll try to do our maximum. Do you remember this opium war? Okay. Do you remember all these things, ma? Japan, Africa. Now I have to begin from here. Am I right? So, America begins to imperialize. Interest in Pacific. Matthew Perry opens trade in Japan. Alaska. Latin America. 
Hawaii. So America, now America is coming as an imperialist power. Three reasons for American imperialism. Economic competition for raw materials and market for its manufactured goods. So already who are the big imperialist countries now? Who are the big imperialistic nations? Of course, Britain, France, Germany, Italy, Russia, Belgium and other non-European uh, European countries like already we have seen Spain, Portugal here and there. So already there is a spread of the imperialistic countries and now the non-European countries, one of the one is like America and another one is Japan, isn't it? Now what is the reason for though America is a late entry, isn't it? Is or no? America is a late entry, but what is the reasons for American imperialisms? Economic competition for raw materials and market for its manufactured goods. Yes, it is in a, there is a, the, everywhere, see, the co concept over here is an industrial revolution, isn't it? They wanted to build up capitalistic mode of uh, production. So, everything is capitalistic mode, means capitalistic. What is an objective? They wanted to have a more profit with less uh, supermarket, with less investments, isn't it? Now, when everyone has already started, like uh, Britain, do you remember the figure, Octopus Sands, like extending his hands everywhere, more and more they wanted to add. Now, all these industrial based nations, now they are looking for, as we have discussed in yesterday's class, what are the requirements or the basis for the industries to flourish? Raw material, yes or no, RM, raw material, cheap labor market isn't it to sell the products they are in need of a market capital okay and of course political freedom they needed okay so when these things are in now the america it is in the competition for raw materials and markets for its manufactured goods because america itself is a capitalist it has already produced goods in excess one example i have already said what is the concept of manufactured goods in need of a market can I give you one simple example? You just give me an answer at the end of this discussion. Okay. See, your, uh, let me say, your dad is having a mobile shop. Okay. A very costly mobile shop. And you are the one of the loving son of your dad. And in this, the latest iPhone model. Of course, iPhone is very costly. Isn't it? The latest iPhone model has come. And he is having this model in his shop. You are also asking for this mobile and one customer is also asking for an iPhone. He has only one piece. Now, if he is a business person, imagine he is a business person. In order to make a profit, which will be the right business strategy? If he is going to give to you, will it find any profit here? Will he find any profit here? It is like spending out of his own profit, isn't it? Whereas, if he, if he is going to sell to his customers, of course, definitely he will be getting like 10k or 20k above than the price what he, is what he has purchased, isn't it? So, in the business, this is as simple as it is. The American, of course, any uh, developed nations, they have capitalist nations, capitalistic mode of production. They have produced the goods more and more. What are the two objectives of capitalism? One is that, more they they wanted to produce more and more with the cheap wages cheap labor costs cheap wages isn't it so they never find any uh, uh, profit by selling within their country within their nation it is like their people is buying so they will the market their economy will not expand when as they want that this is a prime reason why they wanted to find the market outside is this fine ma'am is this fine for everyone? So, for two reasons, America are into this uh, race or mad race of imperial, extending the imperialism. One is for it is in a raw material. Of course, what for textile industry, we are in need of a cotton. For iron and steel industry, we are in need of a basic materials, isn't it? So, raw materials and market was one of the major things for the economic competition. Second, political and military competition as well. Based on the need for a powerful new navy, they wanted to extend their navy basis as well isn't it fine a belief in the racial superiority what belief the european uh, european uh, nations had do you remember rudyard clipping 
Rudyard Kipling poem. What did he say? It's a white man burden. Yes, all we are all white because we are all very good. They had the perception that it is our duty to civilize the black ones, to civilize the inferior. We are all superior. We have a prime responsibility to civilize them. This is their imagination. This is their perceptions. Okay, a belief in racial superiority and mission to spread the Christianity and civilization to the world. Two concepts comes from here. One is that civilization, white man burden, and second is that to spread. the christianity they wanted to see christianity as a world religion isn't it ma now so africa west and central africa see can you see the africa algeria french see uh, for example this yellow color yellow color libya comes under italy okay belgium see portuguese the africa scramble can you see here french west africa okay french equatorial africa so these are the places this light color shaded is british so nigeria comes under british gold coast sierra leone khartoum rhodesia so these are the places which comes under the british and belgium congo and see so the uh, like do you remember like chinese cutting of water uh, chinese melon such like the africa is its parceled between the european nations okay see british africa after the scramble like ex scramble they have just scrambled the africa among the european nations like british france germany italy belgium portuguese spanish are you getting it ma are you getting it friends please drop a confirmation message is there any buffer is it buffering next what is colonialism which means the practice of acquiring the colony by the conquest or other means and making them in making them dependent colonialism what did we discuss in yesterday's class it is mainly on what purpose commercial economic benefits is or no ma economic benefits isn't it then the country which is subjugated by a metropolitan capitalistic country is described as a colony what happens in a colony is a colonialism in other word colonialism is the total system of imperialist domination of a pre capitalist country is this fine is this fine yes ma please drop an answer is anything is buffer is everything clear now fine colonialism and imperialism of course imperialism it's a state policy a practice or an advocacy of extending power and dominion especially by the direct territorial acquisition or by gaining a political and economic control of these areas of oh, that is the other areas just we have to remember the keyword they wanted to build an empire not only in terms of economic perspective they wanted to set forth their strong foot in terms of political socio economic military in all the possible ways okay so that is wider is this fine next because it also involves the use of a power they don't in order to achieve their end they never bother about what means they are following they are they, they didn't hesitate to use the military power with a military force or some subtler form isn't it so this is more extensive whereas a colonialization is a process by which the central system of power dominates the surrounding land and its components of course it is a practice of an establishment exploitation maintenance acquisition and expansion of colonies in one territory by people from another territory in short colonialism is referring to establish the colonial territories overseas imperialism is to create and expand the empire try to uh, try to imagine which is big map when you compare when we have when we have the short question in front of us whether it is colonialism or imperialism which is big of course imperialism isn't it because they wanted to build an empire as such now colonialism primarily concerned about economic benefits alone whereas imperialism they wanted to set forth their food in all the perspectives in socio political economic in all the perspectives so which is broader category of domination that encompasses colonialism because for example colonialism economic isn't it whereas imperialism socio political economic military so is it right to say 
yes of course Colo imperialism is a broader category of a domination both are dominant factor whereas imperialism is a broader category of domination that encompasses colonialism how do you say encompasses colonialism because it encompasses economic benefits as well is or no economic is one among the imperialist method socio political economic military and other means so it encompasses colonialism is or no ma are you getting it is this clear the age of modern colonialism began about 1500 following the european discoveries of course you know the story the sea route discovery of a sea route around africa southern coast 1488 and of america 1492 with these events sea power shifted from mediterranean to the atlantic and to the emerging nation states of portugal spain dutch republic france and england by discovery conquest and settlement these nations expanded and colonized throughout the world spreading european institutions and culture by discovery conquest and settlement these nations expanded and colonized throughout the world spreading european institutions and culture is this fine i think things are clear here so again and again is a very important com concept imperialism versus colonialism what is this imperialism is a policy of extending a country's power and influence through military force or by diplomacy colonialism is just a practice of acquiring a partial or a full control over another country exploiting it economically its main concern is economic isn't it friends are you able to follow next imperialism is an ideology that drives colonialism whereas colonialism is as such a practice of extending territories forming colonies and settlement and exploiting the resources of them imperialism can be categorized into formal and informal imperialism colonialism produced two main types of colonies settler colonies and dependencies is this fine ma is this fine next the age of imperialism now we are moving into the next chapter age of imperialism 1870 till 1914 just before the first world war is this clear please drop a confirmation message can i proceed is this clear is fine for everyone are you able to follow next so although the industrial revolution and the nationalism shaped the european society in the 19th century imperialism which is the domination by one country or people over another group of people dramatically changed the world during the later half of that century is this fine ma now imperialism did not begin in the 19th century of course from the 16th to early 19th 19th century an era dominated by what is now termed as an old imperialism in which european nations sought trade routes with the far east explored the new world and established the settlements in north and south america as well as in southeast asia are you getting it idea of course the new imperialism that after the discovery of the routes and european nations sought trade routes with the far east especially the new explored the new world and established the settlements in north and south america as well as in southeast asia they set up a trading post and gained the footholds on the coast of africa and china and worked closely with the local rulers to ensure the protection of european economic interest their influence however was limited why in the age of new imperialism when does it begin ma age of new imperialism starting from 1870 till 1914 am i right so the age of new imperialism that began in 1870 european state established the vast empire mainly in africa but also in asia and the middle east so the age of new imperialism that began in 1870s european state established the vast empires mainly in africa isn't it africa was the first target then only they achieved their aims now very good uh, mainly in africa but also in asia and middle east friends at uh, the end of the session not uh, i might begin the quiz life was by 315 or something 
So in another 40 minutes or something, we'll begin the quiz. So do join the quiz, okay? Uh, Chintia, can you share the quiz code uh, from taking the link? If possible, can you share the link, copy and paste it here, ma? I have shared it in a group, in DLMAM group. Please copy and paste the link and the code here in the chat box, okay? Fine. From the late 1800 through the early 1900, Western Europe pursued a policy of imperialism that became known as the New Imperialism. This new imperialist age gained its impetus, importance from economic, military, political, humanitarian and religious reasons as well as from the development and acceptance of a new theory, social Darwinism and advances in the technology. Is this fine, Ma? So, from the late 1800 to early 19, the Western Europe pursued a policy of imperialism that became known as new imperialism. Fine. So, what are the economic reasons for the new imperialism? Is this fine? By 1870, it became necessary for European industrialized nations to expand their markets globally in order to sell products that they could not sell domestically on their continent. Yes or no? There is no point. See, always there is a craze for a foreign goods, isn't it? As I discussed with an example, there is no point in selling within the nation itself. The benefit will not be there. There will not be a huge benefit. Only when they find the markets outside, then they can sell the product with a good profit. Secondly, businessmen and bankers had excess capital to invest. They have enough money. But where do they invest? Do the investment and foreign investment offer the incentive of greater profit despite the risk? So, the need for cheap labor and a steady supply of raw materials such as oil, rubber, manganese for steel. Steel, these are the basic raw materials for the iron and steel industries, isn't it? Require that industrial nations maintain firm control over these unexplored areas. Are you getting an idea? Are you getting it, ma'am? Please drop a confirmation message. So, uh, first thing is that they can't sell the products dom domestically in order to meet out the profit. So, they have to find the markets outside. Second, that there is a no deficient for capital. They have an excess capital, businessmen and bankers. And they wanted to invest this capital outside. Through that only they will get the incentive. Though it was a risk factor, but it is also a huge profit. What is the third dominant? What is the third factor? Apart from the market capital, the third is a cheap labor and a study supply, continuous supply of a raw materials. So, these are all the reasons for the new imperialism. This all, how can you make this happen? How can you achieve it? Only by directly controlling these regions, which meant setting up of colonies under their direct control. Could the industrial economy work effectively or so the imperialist thought? The economic gains of the new imperialism were limited. However, because the new colonies were too poor to spend money on European goods. Very sad. Already the colonies were more in number. Now, the new colonies, they are not so bad. They are not rich. See, they are ready to, they are not so rich. They don't have enough purchasing power parity. They don't have enough money to buy these goods. Of course, because they are too poor to spend money on the European goods. Okay. So, this uh, new imperialism, it was not fruitful over there. Military and political reasons leading European nations leading European nations also felt that colonies were crucial to military power, national security and nationalism. Hi ma'am. Yes ma'am. Monish. Good afternoon. Very good afternoon. So, leading European nations also felt that colonies were crucial to military power, national security and nationalism. I discussed yesterday's class itself, na? when they wanted to show their power more, is it enough? See, any nation, you will try any nation or a country, we will also use to judge by its military power, defense mechanism, isn't it? So, in order to establish their naval bases, they are in search for the new colonies. Military leaders claim that a strong navy was necessary in order to become a great power. Thus, 
naval vessels needed military bases around the world it is not that they are going to have the bases in one or two places they wanted to build around the world to take on a coal and supplies okay so that is a mode of transport sea waves they are focusing more on waterways at the same time they also wanted to strengthen their power and uh, strong navy to build a strong navy so naval vessels needed military bases around the world to take on a coal and supplies island and harbors were seized to satisfy these needs colonies guaranteed the growing european navies safe harbor and coaling station you not use canada no ma i do not know canada okay which they needed in time of war national security was an important reason for great britain decision to occupy the egypt so every big imperialist nation they had one reason or the other in order to acquire the colonies okay protecting the suez canal was vital for the british empire of course the suez canal which formally opened in 1869 why the british is so interested on the suez canal that's why it is also one of the concept its target on the africa the prime reason behind is that it was to shorten the sea route from europe to south africa and east asia you can ask me ma'am they why they wanted to shorten the sea route from europe to south africa and east asia as simple as it is because europea europe is a metropolis mother country okay okay they wanted to extend their control on their, their colonies or they have extended their imperialist colonies their colonies lies in africa south africa east asia if they wanted to exhibit the control over the colonies of course sometimes they has to reach the place it takes a long time okay from europe if they want to reach the africa south africa and east asia so in order to reduce the traveling distance traveling time they were focusing on this the suez canal which formally opened in 1869 to britain the canal was a lifeline to india the jewel of its empire which is the jewel of the uh, which is the jewel in british in this uh, british crown ma of course it's our india isn't it so the other reason is that it also lifeline to india because if it wanted to uh, do the draining of the resources from india they wanted to reach it okay so the canal of a lifeline to india so these are the primary reasons in order to reach the south africa east asia and india many people were also convinced that the possessions of colony was an indication of a nation's greatness colonies were a status symbols at one point of time they started thinking that if you are going to have for example just remember we know what are on the big imperialist countries we know britain germany italy japan france uh, russia usa etc friends okay friends now each call for example uh, britain is having more than 10 colonies under its control but italy is having only four french uh, french is uh, having is only six so as they are trying to see count the numbers which are having more number of colony, colonies it has at one point of time it has been perceived or seen as a status or a symbols are you getting it ma are you getting it so this is also one reason so according to the 19th century german historian hendrik von all great nations should want to conquer barbarian nations is this fine are you able to follow so one we have discussed the economic reasons military and political reasons now the third reason is the humanitarian and religious goal many westerners believe that europe should civilize their little brother beyond the seas do you remember this rudyard kipling in his famous poem poem it is a wise man burden expressed this mission in 1890s Many westerners believe that Europeans should civilize their little brothers beyond the seas. According to this view, non-white would receive the blessings of western civilization. Non-white would receive including medicine law Christianity. What is this they think? Yes, we European they for of course we are white in color. What about this African and other uh, Asian? They are a dark British color. So they have a imagination that they are all have committed sin. That's why God has punished them. Okay, so it's a white man burden to civilizing. They think themselves as a superior. They thought that it is their duly responsibility to to civilize the inferior. 
and also to spread the Christianity. Is this fine, ma? When he prod uh, Europeans to take their moral obligation to civilize the uncivilized, he encouraged them to send for the best e bread to serve your captives. Missionaries supported colonization, Christian missionaries, believing that European control would help them spread Christianity, the true religion in Asia and Africa. Are you getting it? So, the proletizing, they wanted to spread the Christianity, they wanted to make Christianity as a spread across in all the continents, not only in the European, they wanted to see this as a world religion. So, religion is also one among the factor. Next, coming to, they are trying to relate the reasons of social Darwinism. Of course, you know about Charles Darwin, isn't it? Yes, survival of the fittest. Who is the best example for the survival of the fittest, ma? See? In 1859, Charles Darwin published on the origin of the species. What was it? According to him, Darwin claimed that all life had evolved into the present state over a million of years. To explain the long, slow process of evolution, Darwin put forth the theory of natural selection. Natural forces selected those with physical traits best adapted to the environment. Darwin never promoted any social ideas, isn't it? Who is best adapted to the environment? They will survive because this world is so big. This world is so big. There is a huge mad race. We can't stop ourselves by complaining this outcome or by kept on saying the complaint, isn't it? So, Darwin never promoted any social ideas. The process of natural selection came to be known as survival of the fittest. Who are able to survive in this, you can thrive long. Okay, the Englishman Herbert Spencer was the first to apply, apply, excuse me, to apply survival of the fittest to human societies and nations. Is this fine? So, natural forces selected those with the physical triad best adapted to their environment was the first to apply survival of the fittest to human societies and the nations. Is this clear, ma? So, Darwinism fostered imperialistic expansion by proposing the same, proposing that some people were more fit, that is, they are advanced than the other. The Europeans believed that they as the white race were dominant. And it was only natural for them to conquer the inferior people as a nature's way of improving mankind. They are trying to justify these concepts and as per their convenience. But this is not actually true, isn't it? Nobody is like since they are white, they are superior and uh, Africa and Asian nations, they are black, they are inferior. No such things. Thus, the conquest of inferior people was just and the destruction of the weaker races were nature's natural law. Okay. So, these are the different uh, reasons. And the last is Western technology. These are the reasons with respect to age of new imperialism. Yes or no, ma? New imperialism which has begun from 1870 till 1914. Am I right, my dear friends? Next. Superior technology and improved medical knowledge helped to foster the imperialism. 29. Of course, enable the Europeans to survive the tropical disease and venture into the mosquito-infested interiors of Africa and Asia. 29. Barkacho. Okay. The combination of the steamboat and the telegraph enabled the western powers to increase their mobility and quickly respond to any situations that threaten their dominance. Just remember European nations. Okay. Britain is sitting in his place, in his hometown and his colonies there in Africa and East Asia. Of course, he has to monitor from them. All of a sudden, if there is going to be any internal rebel or any revolt, of course, he has to rush to the spot. Okay, isn't it? So, it, it, from there he has to rush to this part. Before that, through means of this communication to the telegraph and the steamboat and other things, he can get to know what actually it is happening. Then through the telegraph and other communication method, he can pass some orders. By the time he reaches the place, then he can know how to control it. Isn't it? So, the technology has widely helped them in extending their imperialism. The rapid fire machine gun also gave them a military advantage and was helpful, helpful in convincing Africans and Asians to accept the western control. 
is this fine ma so causes of the new imperialism which is the new imperialism yes please be very careful 1870 till 1914 we have discussed the different causes one is that economic what is economic causes need for the market for the capital uh, need need for the markets yes they can't sell within the domestic because they can't find the profit so they wanted to sell the products outside raw materials and capital they have more capital sources of investments okay friends could you please be online i'm getting uh, just one minute i'll be back i'll be back in just one minute I'm sorry. Is this clear? Sorry, had a query here. Fine, ma. So, need for markets. Is everything is clear? Is everything is clear? Okay. Need for a market. raw materials sources of investments okay military and political apart from this capital cheap labor am i right capital cheap labor etc next military and political need for military bases national security we have said na they wanted to extend the military base national security source of pride and nationalism okay so they have started thinking that more number of colonies is under their control it is like adding to the prestige and power okay and for military bases in order to acquire the coal and other supplies and they also wanted to strengthen their naval base national security a source of sense of pride and nationalism next humanitarian and religious beliefs white man burden so rudyard kipling okay rudyard kipling of course white man burden so this all the just a summary of the topics you have to include while giving the causes of new imperialism social darwinism spread of christianity technology new medicine new weapons and transportation is this fine just now we have discussed all these things is this good imperialism in asia especially first in india what is it happened ma the british took control of india in 1763 after defeating the french in 7 years war 1756 to 1763 isn't it the british control india through the british east indian company of course from 1600 which ruled with an iron hand still very still during diwali times we'll be having the classes on regulating act fix act it get premiered so don't miss that it will be only short session like 1 hour or 1 hour 20 minutes so uh, i have uh, done that in portions try to attend it finally i'll come and do the live class 
for 1853 and I'll do the consolidation revision. Is this fine, ma? So, in 1857, an Indian revolt led by the native soldiers called Sipahis. You know, 1857 revolt, isn't it? Led to an uprising known as the Sipahi Mutiny. After suppressing the rebellion, the British government made India a part of the empire in 1850, as mentioned. So, the complete transfer of power from the crowd, from the company to the crowd, as happened only after the 1857 revolt, isn't it? The British introduced the social reforms that advocated education and promoted technology. Britain profited greatly from India, which was called, according to Britain, of course, which is the crown jewel of the British Empire. Of course, you just imagine this is a crown, okay? This crown is studded with very closely... Uh, Diamond stones and other things. This is a jewel on the crown. Which is this jewel? This crown studded. This jewel is India. Okay. It is a perception. Crown jewel of the British uh, British empires. Why? Why did we get this name? Because we are so rich in the sense we have enormous amount of resources. They got fascinated towards our resources, our uh, craftsmanship, all of the things. All of the things. Then. The Indian masses, however, continued to live close to starvation and the British had little respect for the native Indian culture. It is only the British is trying to grow, but our people, our common people, they are like uh, uh, close to starvation, hunger. And British had little respect for the native Indian culture. Yes, they didn't give the importance for our culture. The Dutch held the Dutchies industries and extended their control over Indonesia. While the French took over Indochina, which is this Indochina? VLC, Vietnam, Laos and Cambodia, isn't it? The Russians also got involved and extended their control over the area of Persia. Do you remember in yesterday's class, Iran, what did we say? Try to remember RBI, RBI, Iran, northern part of Iran comes under the control of Russia. And southern Iran, of course, it comes under the control of whom? Britain. Esonoma? Esono? Yes. RBI. Whereas the Russia has given its control on Iran after Russian Revolution. Is this fine? After Russian Revolution, is given it, it gave up its hold on northern Iran. After that, Iran comes under the control of Britain. This we have discussed in yesterday's class itself. So, in those days, it was Iran means it's a Persia. Are you getting it, ma? Any doubt till now? Hope everything good to go. Next, China. So, cutting of the Chinese melon. Yesterday's class we have discussed. Since the 17th century, China had isolated itself from the rest of the world and refused to adopt the Western ways. The Chinese permitted trade but only at the port of Canton where the rights of European merchants were at the whim of the emperor. Imperialism in China began with the first opium war. Did I say? Yesterday's class, I have also requested you to write an answer on imperialism in China. Isn't it, ma'am? Imperialism in China began with the first opium war, 1839-42. When the Chinese government tried to halt the British from importing opium, illegal trade, it is this, a drug trade, where the British is forcing the Indians to grow the opium and from here it has smuggled to China, isn't it? But the Chinese government has resisted towards this because both economically as well as the people also, Chinese people also is getting addicted to this opium. This resulted in a war in Britain's superior military and industrial might easily destroyed the Chinese military forces. So, this has led to the war. In this war, of course, Britain won over the China. The loss that China has lost in the war, which have been signed by the Treaty of Nanking, 1842, opened up opened up five ports to the British, gave Britain the island of Hong Kong and forced China to pay a large indemnity. What is this indemnity, ma? They have to pay for the Losses, isn't it? So, 
and have initially how many ports is open to them it is was only two ports is open after that five ports to british and gave britain the island of hong kong as well and forced the china to pay a very large indemnity this has resulted of course in 1858 china was forced to open up 11 more treaty ports that granted special privileges such as the right to trade with the interior of the china and the right to supervise the chinese customs office foreigners also received the right of extra territoriality in yesterday's class we have discussed the extra territorial rights is or no ma'am so initially only two ports after this opium war five ports and later on some time it has been extended to 11 ports this is one way it got affected china and secondly that it has also has to give the extra territorial rights which meant that western nations maintained their own courts in china and westerners were tried in their own courts is this fine between 1870 and 1914 the western nation carved china into spheres of influence area into which outside powers claimed exclusive trading rights this is on war with japan isn't it how does ma first war with china with the britain it has lost and it has given extra territorial rights and it is also given ports and island of hong kong whereas the japan was interested on korea so it has waged a war on china in order to take the ownership of korea on this war of course who has lost in this china has lost in this so it has to pay japan a very large war indemnity it which was closer to 150 million uh, 150 million dollars when china is in a bad shape it can't repay this entire huge amount now the company now the other nations like who the Bra uh, france germany uh, russia britain all others they come forward they are saying that don't worry my dear china we will help you in paying your loan okay so like this only they have entered but later on they have acquired the territory in china they have parcel china they have cut them along and they have shared it among themselves china germany france acquired territory in southern china germany gained the shandong peninsula in northern china russia obtained the control of manchuria and leased port arthur and british took control of yangtze valley isn't it so in these places they can construct the railways roadways whatever the benefit it can happen in these places it comes under the clutches this in detail yesterday's class we have discussed okay please go and check that then united states of course which had not taken part in the craving of china so it is saying are what is this here you have cut the chinese melon and you have parceled uh, melon into the pieces britain has taken a piece germany has taken a piece france has taken a piece and where is my piece where is my share me to policy open door policy come on come on i can't agree to it okay you just better you create a policy open door policy where all nations have an equal rights in sharing is or no is my good afternoon so the united states which had not taken part in carving up china because it feared that spheres of influence might hurt us us commerce and promoted the open door policy in 1899 John Hay the American secretary of the state proposed that equal trading rights yes ma very good afternoon equal trading rights to china be allowed for all nations and the territorial integrity of china is respected this imperial nation accepted this policy in principle but not always in practice for the united states however open door policy become the cornerstone of its chinese policy at the beginning of 20th century is this fine i think with respect to imperialism in china started with opium war and has got ended with the open door me to policy is this fine is this fine japan wait okay Japan Japan was the only asian country that did not become a victim all other asian countries yeah asian countries and east asian countries are the direct victim of imperialism whereas japan is the only nation which has joined the imperialist power now it is in the position of imperialism it started acquiring the colonies in the 17th and 18th century the japanese the japanese expelled the europeans from japan and closed the japanese port to trade with the outside world 
allowing only the Dutch Dutch Dutu to trade at Nagasaki. In 1853, Commodore Matthew Perry, an American naval officer, led an expedition to Japan. He convinced the shogun, a medieval type ruler, to open a post for trade with the United States. Japan has closed all its trade with the outside world. They said, come on here, I can't open any port, okay? I don't want to do any trade with the outside world. Oh, I'm, I'm not interested in this. It has opened only one port at Nagasaki, that also to the Dutch. Now, in 1853, a commodore, of course, his name is Matthew Perry. He is an American naval officer. He went and spoke to the Japan uh, uh, ruler, medieval type ruler. His name is the Shogun. He said, my dear, why you are closing all the ports? Because we want this world is so big. We want to expand our uh, activities, trading mechanisms. So, please humbly open the port. We are ready to do the business with you. Honest, uh, honest negotiation we can have. This led an expedition to Japan. He convinced the shogun actually. He didn't fight. He convinced him. And finally, it has led to the opening ports for trade with the United States. Initially only for Dutch. Now it has extended to US as well. Fearful domination by foreign countries, Japan, unlike China, reverts its policy of isolation and began to modernize by borrowing from the West. Yes, what did China do? China is said, come on, I am not going to have acquired any of the Westernized policies. I am saying no to Westernism. Okay, I don't want, I, I don't want to acquire any modern thing. I will keep myself quiet. I am isolated. But this is not a concept of Japan. Though Japan is an Asian country, he is ready to expel the himself he is ready to open up and he is trying to begin to modernize by borrowing from the west okay are you getting it next so the Meiji restoration which began in 1867 very very important the change in the government in japan which has brought multiple results the Meiji restoration which began in 1867 sought to replace the feudal rulers or the shogun and increase the power of the emperor what is this here this shogun he is a medieval type ruler he is ready to agree to anyone whosoever comes and talk with him he is just saying okay now the Meiji, this is a new form of government, okay? Increase the power of the emperor, sought to replace the feudal ruler or the shogun. Feudal ruler, medieval type ruler. This Meiji restoration, the change in the new government in Japan has increased, changed the earlier ruler and increased the power of the emperor. What is the goal? Of course, the ultimate goal was to make the Japan strong enough to compete with the West. We are trying to say the East is not left to the West. The Asian nations, we are not uh, inferior to you, the European nations and the Western nations. So, we will give you a tough competition to you. We will give a tough uh, fight to you. Does any other East uh, Asian nations other than Japan, did they have this much uh, fire in them? You take Africa, you take Asia, you take East Asia, India. No, we were all came under the subjugation. But Japan is the only Asian nation which has stood first and it has tried to become set himself as a strong competition with the West. Is this fine, Ma? Is this fine? The new leaders strengthened the military and transformed the Japan into an industrial society. The Japanese adopted a constitution based on the Prussian model with the emperor as the head. The government was not intended to promote democracy but to unite the Japan and make it equal to the West. Come on, I am not walking up. I am not bothered about of the people, by the people, for the people. I know how to rule my people. All my focus and ambition and concentration is that to the West, I should show that I am also a capable person. Yes, to the West, to the European nations and to the West, I wanted to prove myself that I am equally competitive to them. Is or no, ma? Are you getting it? This is a Japan spirit, of course. The leader... Built up a modern army based on a draft and constructed a fleet of iron steam, iron steamships. Is this clear? The Japanese were so successful that they became an imperial power. In the Sino-Japanese War of 1894-95, Japan defeated China. Yes or no, very sadly, China has been badly defeated in the hands of Japan. The sad ending is that and forced her to claim, uh, give up her claims in Korea. So, China has given her care, worship of Korea, uh, gave independence to Korea. Korea went in the hands of Japan. Apart from 
that it was also forced to pay somewhere like 150 million dollars at the indemnity war charges is this fine japan also gained the control of its first colonies taiwan and pescados islands and shocked the world by defeating russia in the russia japanese war hare japan is an asian how did ke, how did can defeat the uh, european nation russia russia is so big na see next to war shocked the world the entire world on went on standstill and shocking how could russia could be defeated by the hands of japan japan is a small all island nation japan is a small asian nation it was grown up so big that it can defeat the uh, european nation does the world will be under shock or not ma okay they shocked the world by defeating russia in the russo japanese war of 1904 to 1905 japan victories were the first time that an ancient asian country has defeated an european power in the 200 years in the last 200 years it is like an ant over an elephant okay ant winning an elephant is it possible Elephant is European nations, isn't it? European countries, Russia is so big in the world itself. And now, and of course, Asian. This is a Japan is a small island country when this elephant, when this Russia got defeated at the hands of Japan. Now, entire world started looking at the performance and the ability of the Japan. This has happened. Ma'am, how can I contact you? Is there any telegram channel? Yes, ma'am. There is a telegram channel, ma'am. Friends, uh, you guys are not haven't joined my telegram channel. Okay, you just give me a request to this number. I'll add up because in my special classes, I have given my telegram channel. Anyway, to this is my telegram number. 2041. 2041. Okay. Here you give me a message, hi ma'am, I'll add you in my telegram channel. But normally in the slide itself I have given my link or no problem. You can add me. How can I contact you? Is there any telegram channel? Is this fine? Fine for everyone? Imperial, imperialism in the Middle East. Techniques, consequences. Effects I think we can demand. Effects we can do it in the next. Is this fine for everyone? So I'll do only. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome, ma'am. I'll do imperialism in, the, imperialism in the Middle East. Okay. The importance of the Middle East to the new imperialist was its strategic location. Why the I is now focusing on the Middle East? Yes, it is in the prime location. The crossroads of the three continents. See, Middle East is attracting the imperialist nation. Yeah, I wanted to acquire the colonies in Middle East here. Because it is in a junction, it is in the crossroads. See, if I am going to acquire the Middle East, if I am going to take the Middle East countries as my colonies, then it will be easy for me to reach Europe, Asia and Africa. Vital waterways, canals and Dardanelles and valuable oil resources as well. The Europeans divided up the Middle East in the following manner. For example, Great Britain, Britain control of the Suez Canal forced her to take an active role in Egypt. Yes or no? Why Britain is inter interested on Suez Canal? Because it wanted to reach the South Africa, Asia. These are the colonies, British colonies, isn't it? If anything goes wrong, if you want to extend this control over them on a strong footing, then always it should be in the easy accessibility. So, Suez Canal, by taking the control of Suez Canal, it will reduce the distance drastically yes or no ma so britain's control why the britain's interest on suez canal this we have already discussed control of the suez canal forced her to take an active role in egypt as well as to acquire the militarily valuable islands of cyprus to secure oil resources for industrial and military needs the british also secured concessions in iran persia did we discuss anglo Russian agreement. 
so it is like a russia and britain they came into the agreement in parceling out the iran isn't it and iraq quiet qatar bahrain pipelines were built to the mediterranean sea and persian gulf so why the everyone attention is towards the middle east means because it is rich in oil resources is or no ma as well as for industry and military needs so that's the pipelines were built to the mediterranean sea and to the persian gulf is this clear is this clear next russia what is the role of russia traditionally russia sought to gain the control of dardanelles as an outlet to the mediterranean sea and an area of expansion okay russia helped to dismember the ottoman empire and gain independence for several balkan state germany in 1899 german bankers obtained the ottoman empire consent to complete the berlin baghdad railroad so these are the ways techniques of imperialism very very interesting isn't it what are the different techniques of imperialism are interesting techniques conquest and annexation overpowering the native rulers so they were in the mad rush of how many conquests they are going to have how many colonies were under their control conquest and annexation conquering their lands concession and franchise exclusive right to exploit the resources sphere of influence sharing regions why for exploitation and development for the metropolis for their benefit but not for the colonies benefit is or no so britain and russia in persia persia is iran am i right then european countries in china is this fine ma protectorate everyone wanted to protect their domestic things so control over the puppet rulers they are only for the namesake rulers whereas the entire uh, uh, ruling authority went to their colon, uh, colonial rule okay indian provinces they all comes under this of course for namesake only he is a he is a king but he might comes under the british rule isn't it ma so economic control taking charges of the finances mandate system paris peace conference 1919 colonies assigned to the league of the nation the delegated authority called mandatories is this fine so effects of imperialism or consequences of imperialism we will discuss in next class is this fine ma now please join the quiz it is very very important i'll share the quiz code now let me give you uh, instructions how you can join the quiz okay join quiz now first thing is that i'll give you the code code is 9939931 is this fine ma 9939931 so what you have to do means please listen it's an amazing ultimate revision uh, policy okay as simple as it is an academy learning app download the an academy learning app in that you have an option of join quiz you go and enter this referral code is this fine ma go and enter the referral code in the quiz Okay, so every day we are going to get exposed. Any doubt, ma? Please join the quiz. Okay, I am waiting for you all to join the quiz. Is this fine? So you can earn the credits as well. equally let me say how to join oh my god quiz code is 993931 three joined good already three has joined how to join 
ओके मा सो is this fine friends please join the quiz from an academy learning app you have an option of join quiz enter code enter the code double nine three nine three one okay Okay, I have started the quiz. So the quiz starts in this way. Start answering it. ओके Join quiz ma from an academy learning app. Go and click the button join quiz. Enter the code. One, two, three.
Hi friends, I'm back. Yes, ma. Uh, today we had a uh, live quiz on Indian physiography. Many of you asked me uh, every day is class and kept on saying the importance of attending live quiz. I think I am conducting quiz for myself. I don't know what's the mindset of students. If you come and attend a quiz on a live platform every day, it's a it's a revision and above all you can learn from your mistakes. If you made a question right, yes, you are strengthening the concept. If you have made the concept wrong and you are learning from the options. And it gives you uh, also a kind, uh, a kind of uh, strategy preparation. How, which area we have to focus or the glaciers. Today we had a questions on glaciers, mountains from north to south, east to west. So, I don't know, even after giving constant uh, uh, reminder to come and join the quiz, students are eloquent to join the quiz. I think uh, this was not the opportunity we were had during our preparation. If if I would have ha had this opportunity, definitely I would not have missed it. Because I could not reading the questions myself, I can see how much it is important from prelims. If you want to clear prelims with ease, uh, do come and join the live quiz. It is absolutely done for your sake, for your benefit. A bit tricky quiz was challenging for me. Yes, I saw you stopped at one point of time answering. Omkar, this is a thing. You have to attempt a question. You have to attempt a question. Here it is. Here you don't bother about a negative marking. Try to get exposed to the questions. And moreover, for others also, I am saying, Ahari has joined the quiz, quiz later. And what about others? Aslam hasn't joined. Karthik yesterday has joined. So you just put the importance of attending the live quiz and the group. Uh, why I'm constantly saying means in no way I'm benefited. I'm simply sitting for half an hour along with you just in order to help you how to perfect your preparation. Okay, first you should understand that reality. Then you have to come and uh, participate uh, voluntarily. That is going to do a tremendous uh, benefits in your prelims so it's a humble request for all of you if you want to clear the prelims with ease you have to get exposed to as many questions as possible okay in one word i could say this is the best i think i can do it so we are here to support you but it is up to you how you are going to utilize the platform to its fullest is this fine ma anyways tonight we have a topic on special class temperature inversion uh, only one topic i'm taking today two parts 8 to 9 and 9 30 to 10 30 do come and attend because yesterday's class itself we had an amazing revision so whatever class i'll do in special of course we get it done the revision and the writing practice everything and uh, fine then tomorrow we'll be having a class it's an awesome why you're letting join uh, you're always late join hurry you have to follow now anyhow i'm sending a messages but i shouldn't do that uh, students should have the sincerity you have to come and wait. See, I can't give you any constant time now because the class posts and one point I stop the topic, then I begin the quiz. So, quiz will normally comes after 3 o'clock only. I begin the class 2 o'clock means today started by 3.10 or something closer to that. So, you have to keep following and uh, then you have to join. Almost you missed more than 25 questions. More than 25 questions you have missed it, Harry, because you are one of the very dedicated and potential students. Uh, please try to be on time. Please try to regular. I think you are, I see, I, I had, I didn't attend a quiz gradually. I randomly, I picked one and two questions. I got, I think my credit score is increasing. But for you all, I think how much you would have, have in your bank balance credits. So much money you have now. So utilize this and you can use it greatly during a subscription. Hurry. And for all of you, I'm saying use this credit while you're taking the subscription. Okay. And above all, it's an ultimate revision. Okay, ma. Fine then. You had a wonderful session. Uh, tonight, come and join me on special class. Until then, it's bye from your GL ma'am. Good luck. Good day. Bye-bye. Stay connected. I know you're all in a celebration mood. Tomorrow alone, we'll have a class. Then again, three days, there is no class. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's a complete holiday in all the platform. I mean, my classes is not there. Of course, majority of the educators because it's a Diwali, Diwali holidays. So, tomorrow do come and attend the live class here as well as uh, in special. Okay. Keep supporting. It's uh, of course, at last it is done for you guys. Okay. So, enjoy. Do well. Study well. Good luck. Good day. Bye-bye. Stay connected.